chapter 14, verse number 23. God's people, we just stand to read God's word. Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 23. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. One more time. And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make an abode with him. Amen. Amen. Shall we call the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, God, this morning. Speak to our hearts today through the preaching of thy word. Encourage us, edify us, build us up. We pray, God, that thou fill us all with thy Holy Spirit. Father, give me the words of utterance so that I may preach only what you want me to preach. I also pray, God, that thou will uh, cover me behind thy cross so that Jesus Christ may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to talk today on the characteristics of a normal Christian. The characteristics of a normal Christian. Now, I'm not talking about an extraordinary Christian, something that you need to do an extra thing. I'm just talking about a normal Christian. What a normal Christian should do. I have to use the word normal today because the word Christian has been misused, has been slaughtered, has been murdered today by everybody and anybody who would think that they are Christian because they follow a religion. I want you to know that the name Christian is not a name of a religion, but it is a definition or a description of a man or a woman who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The name Christian is not a name of a religion, but it is a definition and a description of a man or a woman who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is what Christianity is all about. Today the world thing, if you, have a, if you have a cross on your neck, you may be a Christian. Or if you have a tattoo on your hand, you may be a Christian. Or if you have a cross in your home, you may be a Christian. Or if you have something, you may be a Christian. That does not make anyone a Christian. Or some people think that because your parent is a Christian, so you are a Christian. No, you know, God does not have a grandchildren, but God only has children. Amen. Amen. In Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse number 12 says, the, um, To those who have believed in His name, what the Bible says, But as many as received to them, He gave He gave them, gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Amen. You see, to those who have received and believe, they are called as Christian and they are called as what? Sons of God. Amen. Amen. You see, God does not have grand seal children of God. There is no grandchildren of God. There are sons of God. Amen. Every man and in every woman are called as the sons of God when you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we must understand. We must make these things as right and make people aware that they don't become a Christian because they came to a church. They don't become a Christian because they have a Christian name. They don't become a Christian because they um, because their parents are Christian or because they belong to a certain denomination or because of some signs that they may be having in their home. Christianity, 
The definition of Christian is of a man or a woman who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sadly, in this day and age, there are a lot of converts and less of a Christian. There are many converts and there is less of Christian in this day and age. You'll be shocked to know because most of the people like to call themselves as Christian but not be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you read the gospel book of Acts chapter 12, the Bible says for the first time they were called as disciples, uh, they were called as Christians. Why? Who were called as Christians? The disciples were called as Christians. Not the convert, but the disciples. Well, what does disciple mean? Disciples is the one who follows the master. The one who follows the master is called as a uh, disciple. And these were the one, these disciples were following whom? Following Christ. That's why at Antioch for the first time they were called as Christians, Christians were following Christ. There are sadly a lot of converts in our churches or converts in this day and age in Christianity and very less Christians. Because a Christian is not a convert. A Christian is a follower of Christ. Are you getting me? Because there is a lot of converts today. Hey, pray a prayer. Sign a card. Dip into the water. You become a Chris Christian. No. You may be a convert. Maybe from one church you came to another church. Or from one religion you came to another religion. It's just a convert. God is not looking at a convert. He wants to see if there is someone who follows him and his word. Amen. That's why he says, if you love me, if any man love me, he will keep my words. The keeper of God's word is a follower of God. And the keeper of the word of Christ is a follower of Christ. And that's why they are called as Christian. Because they were disciples. They were following Christ. Not because they got from one religion to another religion. Or from one church building to another church building. Or from one denomination to another denomination. That is just a convert and not a Christian. So I'm going to talk to you today about the characteristic of a normal Christian. The characteristic of a normal Christian. This is about a person who has put his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he is following the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not something extraordinary, but he just he is qualified as a Christian because he meets everything what the Bible says. So that's why he's a Normal Christian. He is not doing something extra. He is not doing anything less. He is not being forced to do something. He just does because he is converted. He has repented. He is regenerated. He has been filled by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost leads him. He is, normal, he is led by the world. He is led by the Spirit of God. He is a normal Christian. He does, out, he, does, he does everything what the Bible says because the living water is overflowing from these bowels. Amen. It's not a dry river anymore. A person who follows the Lord Jesus Christ is a person who is actually a walking, talking, living water, river, stream, and a waterfall. And so the characteristic of a normal Christian is not something he does something extra. He just qualifies because of what the Bible says. Today, we've got to be very careful whom do we call as a Christian. Are you a follower of Christ today? If you're a follower of Christ, then you are a Christian. If you're not a follower of Christ and just prayed a prayer and, uh, and, and got baptized, I don't know what to say about it. But according to the Bible, the disciples who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who believed the gospel and followed the Lord Jesus Christ were called as Christians. The Bible is very clear. The followers, the disciples of Jesus Christ were called as Christian. Now, the characteristic of a normal Christian. The first thing we will see that he is saved by the grace of God. Amen. He is saved by the grace of God. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. 
Turn your Bible with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, we see the first thing about a normal Christian. You don't become a Christian until this is reality in your life. You are not a Christian if you are not meeting the, the necessity of these two verses in your life. Because you cannot be a Christian if you believe in your good works. You cannot be a Christian if you believe in your church. You cannot be a Christian if you believe in some righteous thing that you do. You are not qualified to, call, to be called as a Christian. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse number, nine, verse number 8 and 9 the Bible says, For by, everybody say that next word, grace. I is saved. Amen. Can you say that again? For by grace I is saved. Amen. You see, you're not saved by the church today. You're not saved by a preacher today. You're not saved by some, uh, some organization today. You're not saved by some good things you did. You're saved not because you are good. You're saved because he is good and he did everything for you. Amen. And you believe it by faith. Amen. Sadly, I see around today, I don't know if you have seen, I see around today, there are, so many, there are people who do not know Christ and are ignorant and they're going around. I see a lot of ch cars and I see a lot of bikes today having a picture of so-called a Christian servant and people making banner out of him and worshipping him. Do you know who about whom I'm talking about? Ignorant people. I've been misled in the land of Goa. And so-called Christian preachers like to be famed by the people today. Everyone has their pictures on their cars and their bike and people are worshipping him and his wife. And I'm broken, I'm sad. And I'm angry as a man of God. And you as a man of God and a woman of God got to stand and preach the word and lead the people to the truth. Satan is working 24-7 to take as many as he can to, the, to hell because he knows the battle already. He has he's been defeated. He has lost the battle. And so many so-called preachers today behind the pulpit who are actually the vessels of Satan. May the Lord destroy us if we would ever want to take his glory. Glory alone belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us go and preach the truth. Let us preach the gospel of salvation by grace and not by words. It's not about you and me, my beloved. Gospel is not at all about you and me. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ who became man, shed his precious blood, to taking our sins upon him, dying on the cross of Calvary and was buried. And on the third day, victoriously and graciously, he rose again as he promised. Amen. It's all about him. It's all about Him. We have to come to a point where we will take a stand and tell the world what the truth is. We cannot be afraid and be inside a shell while our brothers and sisters and while our friends and families are on the way to eternal damnation. And preachers, misleading preachers, young, wonder, uh, innocent people who actually are hungry to know the truth. Since I've been on, on, on the media, uh, I have, the last two weeks I've received several phone calls. Saying, brother, we always heard a message about blessings and we always heard a message about prosperity. It is, it is so encouraging. I never miss your program, brother. What an encouragement it is to know there are people who still are longing for the truth and are blessed by the truth and wanting to know the truth. My friend, it's not about me alone. I need you to join me in this battle of faith and fight the good fight of faith and bring glory to God for the time is less and 
is coming very soon and the devil is working hard and innocent people are going to hell and righteous people who are saved by grace are sitting and doing naught. But you and I are given the truth and are called to give the gospel to the lost so we can win someone to Christ. Are you going to stand for Christ? Are you saved by the grace of God? A normal Christian, the first thing that happens is he is saved by the grace of God. For by grace I am saved through faith. Grace. It's not that what I deserve. Grace is something I do not deserve. It's unmerited favor of God. It's an unconditional love of God. That he pours even when I don't deserve. Like in Romans chapter 5 verse number 8 it says, God commendeth his love towards us. Oh boy, listen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? Amen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Which means I don't deserve his righteousness to be poured on me. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve his grace. I don't deserve anything. Yet when I was a sinner, he thought about me. He died for me on the cross. He died for you on the cross. He thought about you and he shed every drop of blood as a sacrifice for you and for me and for the sins of the whole world. It's all about him. It's all about him. For by grace I is saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It's not because you got baptized. It's not because you gave something to church. It's not because you were faithful in some good thing. It's not because you are a good person. It's not because you are forgiving someone. It's not because you have become cold and cool and peaceful. It's not about anything. It's just that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. And the Holy Ghost convicted our hearts when we heard the message. And we were able to put our faith in the work of Jesus Christ. That his shed blood, death, burial and resurrection is sufficient for us to have our sins cleansed and be redeemed from hell. Amen. Amen. And that's a good news. That I, I don't have to do anything. Because I cannot do anything. I'm helpless. So I look at myself here. I'm helpless. I'm on the way to eternal damnation. But there's a call comes ringing or the restless waved. Which is sending the light, the light of the gospel light. And I come to understand as the spirit of God convicts when I hear the truth. He convicts a sinner. You realize that, man, this is the truth, that I'm a sinner on the way to eternal, but Jesus Christ can save me if I would only put my faith in him. Amen. Amen. I don't have to give tithes and offering. I don't have to jump in a well. I don't have to do anything for my salvation. All that I got to do is come to him and accept that free gift of salvation. Amen. Amen. A normal Christian, the first step is saved by the grace, not by his work. Remember, Brother Lawson does not save. Grace and Truth Baptist Church does not save. Any Baptist or churches do not save. No churches in the world can train. No preacher in the world can save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you. Because religion will only make you more religious. But Jesus Christ will make you the child of God. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not because of you and me. Not of works. It's his grace. See, Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness. Titus 3 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. It's not because what you and I do, my beloveds. The Bible says, but according to his mercy. You know what mercy means? Grace and mercy goes hands in hand. The grace of God gives more what we don't deserve. And the mercy of God does not give what we deserve. Grace is something that I don't deserve. I don't deserve heaven, but it gives me. Mercy is I deserve hell, but it does not give me. 
You understand that? The grace and mercy goes hand in hand. I am saved by the grace of God through faith. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved me. His mercy is He did not send me to hell. Saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You know, when God saves you, He renews you. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of things going on today in the churches today. Hey, don't worry what you are. You got saved. Everything is fine. You don't have to do anything. You are a Christian. No, you may be a convert, but not a Christian. Because the disciples are called as Christians. Disciples are the ones who consistently followed Christ. That's why Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my words. And so in the book of Acts, we see the disciples followed and kept the word of God. And the enemies watched at them and then say, those are Christians. Why? Because they were following Jesus Christ. They were following the teachings of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Secondly, we say, obeys in water baptism. Obeys in water baptism. You see, Acts chapter 8, verse number 37. Now, if you're using God's word, you will find this word. If you're not using God's word, you will not find it. And this morning we read in the book of Proverbs that thou shalt not take away or add anything into the word of God. In the book of Acts chapter 8. And I'll tell you why the devil took it away from his versions. In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse number 37. You know the story over, over here about the Philip and the eunuch? And so we find in verse number 37. Uh, I will read for you from verse number 34 onwards. Or maybe... Um, 26 would be nice. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all the treasure, and had come to Jerusalem to, for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot and reading, read Isaiah the prophet. Amen. You see, this man went to worship, but he's not a Christian. He was reading his Bible, but he's still not a Christian. He's doing the right thing, but he's still not a Christian. He went to the Jerusalem, he read the Bible, he's not a Christian. Verse number 28, the Holy Spirit is at work right now here. Verse number 28 says, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Verse number 29, 29 then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to he, this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Verse number 31. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which you read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. 53 is reading the suffering of Jesus Christ. In verse number 33, in his humiliation, humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth. Verse number 34, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Verse number 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. When there is an opportunity to open your mouth and give a testimony, you better do it. That's the character of a normal Christian life. Amen. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Amen. You see, he did not preach about any other thing. He did not preach about politics. He did not preach about sports. He did not preach about family. He preached about Jesus Christ. Amen. All the world today needs is about Jesus. 
What we need today to change our world is not some uh, united organization. We don't need some good things that uh, some uh, some other uh, uh, some. Um, and nightclubs and all the games that's going on today. If you want to see the world change and have peace, we need Jesus. For only Jesus can give the peace that no world can ever give us. And so you preach Jesus Christ. What Philip did was, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him what? Jesus. Amen. Say again. Jesus and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what does hinder me to be baptized and Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God amen, amen. I'm telling you, if you're reading God's word, then this verse is there. If you do not have the word of God, then the devil has taken away this word from your Bible. Because the devil doesn't want you to know that, 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 that salvation is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this man, your Philip says, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Amen. Which means baptism does not save you. What saves you is your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your baptism is an external identification with the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see on the, day, on the cross of Calvary, when the thief was hanging on the side of Jesus Christ, he said, Jesus, remember me. And so Jesus said, today you will be with me in? Paradise. He did not say go down and get baptized and come. He did not say go and give tithes and come. He did not say go and do something and come. He said if you have believed in me, I have saved you. Amen. And so this, this, uh, this thief on the cross who deserved to be hanging on the cross told Jesus to remember him. He believed in Jesus Christ. And Jesus said thou will be with me in paradise today. Amen. Amen. Today. Salvation is instant by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not a process. It's instant. The moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, shed blood, death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved in immediately at that moment. It's an instant thing that happens. Amen. It's not that you are being saved. But you are saved the moment you tr trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. So this unit got saved and now he's asking to be baptized. Now that's the normal Christian. I got saved. I want to get baptized. I want to obey the Bible. The churches today, the preachers today, you don't have to be baptized. No, you don't, it is not necessary to be baptized to be saved. But only those who are saved obeys in water baptism. Amen. Amen. You see, you are saved first. Water, if you're not saved, you go to the water, you only go as a dry man in and come out as a wet man out. You're getting me? If you're not saved, you go into the water as a dry man and come out as a wet man. But a person who is saved is already saved. And now he puts his, now he wants to obey the word of God in water baptism. He is identifying as a testimony, outward testimony. Then I'm dead and I'm buried and I rise again with Jesus Christ. The day, identifying with the death, burial and resurrection with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A normal Christian. I'm saved and now I want to get baptized. So a normal Christian obeys in water baptism. And so what the Bible says, if thou believers with thou, it's not saying go and take some classes. A lot of people say, after I understand all the Bible, then I will take baptism. Really? Even your grandfather never understood the whole Bible. Amen? Amen? Even your preacher is still studying the Bible. And we will study until we go to the grave. Amen? Amen? We will never understand the Bible completely in everything. This is God's word. You understand that? There are certain things that you will never understand even if you read hundred times. That's why the Bible says, the secret things belong unto the Lord. So what is revealed unto him, you do that. Amen? Amen. 
is what troubles you is not what you don't understand what should trouble you is the things that understand you that you understand and you are not doing that should be your you should be troubled with amen? amen it's not about what i don't understand what i don't understand will never trouble me but the things that may that makes me understand is what troubles me because it tells about me how wretched and wicked that i am amen. that's what troubles me so a, so a normal christian is saved by the grace of god and he obeys in water baptism with joy because I'm saved, I want to identify myself and I want to give a testimony to the world and tell the world. Thirdly, the characteristic of a normal Christian, he loves the assembly of the saints. Amen? He loves the assembly of the saints. A lot of people are converts and not Christians. A normal Christian loves the assembly of the saints. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25. You see verse number 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. <coughs> Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking. What's the next? The assembling. Of ourselves together. Amen? Amen. You see it's not a request to anybody. But it's a command from the word of God. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some, like some people have forsaken. The assembling of the saints. And so the word of God says, you do not do that. You should not do that. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one. You know what we need to do? Encourage each one. Why do we come to church? We come to encourage each, each one. Amen. Ask them if there is something that you can help with. Ask them if there is something you can pray for. Ask them if there is something that how you can be an assistant. There are a lot of things, you see, remember, sometimes just your sincere, honest words of concern will change the life of a brother or a sister in the church. Amen. Amen. He may not expect you to give something, but just a word of concern, sincere word of concern, will touch the heart of that brother or a sister, where you can make him or her feel loved by the genuine love of Christ. Amen. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, encourage them, uplift them, edify them. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see, now as the day is approaching, we need to see more people assembling together. The sadly, as the day is approaching nearer, we see more people away from the assembling of the saints. You think whose work is that? The devil's work. What does he do? He gives, keeps you busy in sports. He keeps you busy in your whatever thing that you have, you love with. He keeps you so busy. You know what? The devil is not busy, uh, angry about your busyness. In fact, he makes you so busy that you don't get to give time for Christ. Amen? Amen. Oh, what happened, brother? Headache. What happened, sister? Cold. My son has a cold. And I promise God, Lord, we will continue to honor you from the day one. Will honor you because you have given us. You're proud of your sickness. You're proud of your things. And if you believe in God. Now some of you I understand. Okay don't take it as a person. But there are certain things that you cannot help. But certain things you can help. You see we need to trust God more. Like say oh I thank God that I have a headache. I have a headache because God has given me a head. Imagine your life without head. Will you be happy? There's a man called Nick Vujic. Life without limbs. You know about him? You have everything. Are you thankful to God with what you have? There's a man who has nothing, but he lives to the life to the fullest. Amen? Amen. You don't need so much to be thankful. 
If you are thankful with the less that you have, you will be so happy. Amen. Yeah. Nick Music had nothing. But he honored God. He has been faithful to God. And God keeps blessing him. Takes him to the places which he had never dreamed of. Takes him to such an extent, to such an height. Gives him a beautiful wife. Now a wonderful son. Oh, what a life it is. When you taste Jesus Christ, that is sweeter than the honey. Amen. We are living on the last days. As the day is approaching, the Bible says draw more closer. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some means, but exhorting one another. Hey, you know what? Don't get angry with me because I did not write the Bible. Amen. You really want to get angry, get angry with God. I'm just standing here without anything. I'm just telling you what God is, God is saying, which actually you can also understand. But the problem is, there is a conviction. When the word of God is preached with power, the Holy Ghost convicts you. And when someone says, that's when it pricks you. Amen? So, don't get angry with me. You have enough courage, get angry with God. Because he wrote this book. Amen? And he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen? As you see the day approaching. So what does a normal Christian does? He loves the assembling of saints. He loves when the Christians gather. He loves that day. Because that's normal. It's not something you need to be kicked and pushed. It's normal. It happens within. When God saves, He does that. He did not save you to be a convert. He saved you to be a disciple. Amen? Amen. So then you have the right to be called as a Christian. Because a disciple was called as a Christian, not a convert. Get that right in your dictionary first. All these churches today we see about, just pray a prayer, you become a Christian. No, you become a Christian by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you follow Him. Hebrews 3.13 Hebrews chapter 3.13 but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Yeah, with that verse, turn to book of Acts chapter 2 verse number 46. Acts chapter 2 verse number 46. The Bible says, And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. You know what Christians did in the early days? Every day they met, every day, house to house, there was a prayer meeting, there was gathering, there was encouraging, exhorting, it was daily. And you know what? We need to live as if the day is today that Christ is going to come. So if we know that, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if your house is going to get in fire today? What are you going to do? You know that, that your house today at 5 o'clock will catch fire. What are you going to do now? Tell me. Huh? Evacuate. And then? Call the fire brigade. And then? Or you're going to tell your wife, I told you to shut that, put off that gas. Because of you, the fire is on. Or you're going to say, I told you not to light the matchstick. Because of you, the house is on fire. Are you going to fight together? You're going to do everything that you can. Today, take every necessity and make every necessity arrangement to stop the fire. <coughs> Amen? That's what I say. Live as if today Christ is going to come. Encourage one another. Build one another. Exhort one another. They did it every day, house to house, house to house. Today it's so difficult, even one, in a, one, one day in a week. Amen? Amen? Oh, how sad it is. What, to what extent our Christian life has come up to?
My friends, a normal Christian need not be forced. A normal Christian need not be pushed. It is something that is internally God works and it overflows. But when you harden your heart and allow the world to stop you, remember the force down is more superior than the force up. It's like, for example, if I stand here, or if I stand here, and you stand down, and each one try to pull, who think will be winning? If I stand up here, and Brother Charles stands down, and he pulls me, and I pull him, you think who will come up or who will come down? I will come down, because the force down is more stronger than the up. And this world is a force of downness, and it pulls you more stronger. And we are just strangers in this land. Amen. Amen. You, know what, you know what? You know one thing I... Uh, you see on people who work in Dubai and all. You know what happened? They have never trusted you. They never get, go to church anytime in Goa. They don't assemble anywhere. But when they go to Dubai. And they find out some Goans are around meeting in churches. You know what they do? They go to church just because the people in Goa are gathering there. In that way, many people get saved. Because they understand in Dubai, the people who live in Goa are strangers. The Goans in Dubai are strangers. And in order to meet their own people, they go to those churches there. Because that's where they can meet their people. Hey, brothers and sisters, we are strangers on this earth. And we as Christians meet here. Amen? Amen. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? We are strangers, and it is our responsibility, each one's responsibility, to encourage, to build, to exhort with all long suffering. And show genuine concern, show genuine love. It's not a handshake, I have you, and says, go walk. No, you really be concerned about that brother and sister. And you know what? Oh, no, that brother did not say hi to me and that sister did not say hi to me, so I'm not going to come to church. No, you're not coming to church because of that brother and sister. You come to church because you want to be a blessing to somebody. Amen? Amen. It's not about them. It's about me, what I do to you. So a Christian, normal Christian loves the assembling of the saints. A normal Christian partakes in the Lord's table. Amen? Amen. A normal Christian partakes in the Lord's table. Why? See in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. See verse number 24. It says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for whom? For you. So you means who? You means I, me. Amen? So the body of Christ is broken for whom? For? Come on, for? Me. Amen? He broke it for you. He broke it for me. So the Bible says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Amen. He's not saying break my body and sacrifice my body. No, he said, I've already done it. You don't have to help me. I've already done it. And I crucified myself on the cross and I shed my blood and I rose again. I'm all powerful. I'm all eternal. I'm powerful. And I'm a king of kings sitting on a throne in heaven. So you don't crucify me on the cross. But you remember what I did for you on the cross. Amen. Remember my suffering. Remember my shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection. So when we participate in the Lord's table, we are remembering what Christ did. And how long should we do? Until he comes. Amen. That's a normal Christian. And that's why we need to live a life that pleases Him. Live a holy life. You cannot live in a world for seven days and on the first day of the week you come like a saint. No. A Christian, a follower of Christ falls but he gets up 
repents, confesses, gets right, and keeps going to please the Lord. Amen? Amen? We know as long as we live in this world, you cannot live a sinless, perfect life. But then he promises that he is with you and he'll help you if you desire him and allow him to be and allow him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. You and I cannot take anything for granted. Amen? Amen? You and I cannot take things for granted. You have the truth. God has given you the truth. God has been kind, gracious, loving. He's given you the truth. He wants to know what you can do with that truth. Not keep it in your home, but spread it out in the world. You see, verse number 25, the Bible says, After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had served, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. That's a normal Christian life. He got saved by the grace of God. He obeys in water baptism. He gets along with a good Bible-believing church. He encourages church. He becomes a blessing to the church. And so what he does, he loves the church and he participates in the Lord's table through that church. Amen? Amen. And the Bible tells us that we need to do it. See verse number 26. For as often as you drink this bread, uh, eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death Till he comes. Amen. The Bible doesn't tell you to crucify him or have an unbloody sacrifice on the cross every day. No. It tells you to remember what he did till he comes. Amen. So he partakes in the Lord's table. Then he has compassions toward the lost souls. Remember, a person who is saved by the grace of God is a person who has compassion towards the lost souls. He will do everything and whatever he can, somehow, some way or the other, to get the gospel to the people. Amen? Amen. When I got saved, you know what I did? I took tracks, walked around the beach side, gave gospel tracks to everybody. I was 17 years old. Walked around and gave tracks to everybody. Went to all the priests, shared the gospel. Met whoever it is, gave the gospel to them. And I continue to do it even today. That's a normal Christian life. He does in whatever way he can to give the gospel to the people. He gets an opportunity here, he gives the gospel. He gets an opportunity to give the God tracks, he gives it. He is able to talk to people, he gives it. He has compassion towards the lost souls. Do we really pray for people to get saved? Do we do things that, like, I love this brother of mine. I love this friend of mine. And I want this friend to have the love of Christ. And I want this friend to know Jesus Christ. And so I want this friend to know Christ. So he will not lose anything in life, but gain everything in Christ. And so I'm going to invite and give the gospel. Do we have that compassion? It's a normal Christian's attitude. That's what happens when Christ saves you. You want your loved ones to know Jesus Christ. Amen. He has compassion towards the lost souls. Hey brother, you've been hard today. My friend, what is the use of coming to church and not be fed really well? What is the use? I think you can become more happy while sitting at the ch uh, home, right? We can be happy. We don't need to come to church to be happy. We come to church to be fed, to be charged up, to be convicted, to encourage and build up. You know what Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verse number 1? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Amen. In chapter 9, Paul says, I wish I be accursed. 
I'm willing to go to hell if my people can be saved. Compassion. I don't want someone to go to hell. I want everyone to trust in Jesus Christ. And so I will do anything. Hey, this is not extraordinary Christian. This is a normal Christian's attitude. Amen? It's a characteristic of a normal Christian. It need not be pushed. It not be a lot. That's why I'm saying a lot of people today in churches and in the world who call themselves as Christians are not Christian but converts. But the disciples and the followers of Christ are Christians. Amen? Amen. The name Christian is not a name of a denomination or religion, but it is a description and a definition of a person who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a Christian. Finally, what he does? He supports the local church. So through the local church, the work will go on in the world. Amen? How does he support the local church? He will be a help to the pastor. Pastor, you will not be able to do everything. Is there something that I can do in the ministry? Is there some phone calls that I need to make? Is there some people I need to visit instead of you? Is there something that I can do? You know what a person will do? He'll be a help to the pastor because the pastor cannot do everything. You think I can manage all the 50 people? You think so? How many... How, how, but Tony, you have two kids, right? Is it so easy for you to manage two kids? No. Think about me, man. Have some pity on me. <laughs> right? Church? It's so difficult to manage Joshua and Melvin. Very difficult. They're good boys today. Amen? And so we need help. We need to help each other. You know what happens in the book of Acts? When the church grew, what happened? There was a problem. There was Greek and Hebrews. They were, they were, there was a problem between them. So what the apostles did? They said, you know what? We want you, some men who are filled by the Holy Ghost, we want you to take care of the other work, but we will give time in prayer and in the Word. Sadly, here the pre preacher has to spend in time in Word, in, pr in praying and in managing and doing everything. I so much appreciate Noel Aldrin, Savio, and Moses coming early to do this work and making things done here. Amen? Amen. Can you give a hands for those guys? <laughs> really appreciate you guys. You're wonderful. You help me a lot. This is amazing. Each one of us should do something for the cause of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, how can we manage most of the thing? You know what is one of the thing of the church? You know what, my friends? What, what one of the things about the church? We should be a church that is supporting some missionaries or churches outside. And God will bless us if we will support some ministry out financially. Amen. Amen. There are preachers. There are churches out there who needs some help. And God has blessed most of us here. We can do some sacrifice. See, we need to do something for some pastors out there in Andhra Pradesh, in Orissa, in Bihar. We need to support some pastors. We need to come up with some ideas that we need to come up with something that there are some people in the churches who may need something that we can do who are not much privileged like you. And so there is something that we can do it financially, help some families, or help a widow, or help some children that does not have parents. Our church need to think about it, my beloveds. It's a normal Christian life. Amen? Amen. It's a normal Christian life. You know why God hits hard on our money? Because the heart is more on our money. As the Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And so he hits it hard there because it pains hard over there. You see that? As a Christian, as God blesses us, we should be willing to support the local church. And through the local church, 
bless the people in the church and take the gospel out. So we can think about a missionary who does not have much privilege. We can help him to pay his rent. Or we can help him to feed food for his family. Or we can help someone to have education. Amen. When God gives surplus for all of us, let us use our money to give to God's word. How can we do that? First Corinthians chapter, see what Paul said. Verse number 16. Verse number 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints. Amen. It's not for unbelievers, it's for saints. Amen. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order. Amen. You see, it's not a request, it's an order. To the churches of Galatia, hey brother, it's not for grace and truth, Baptist church in Goa, India. It's for the church in Galatia. Everything, it may be not written to me, but it is written for me. Amen. Amen? And this is how our church should function. The Bible says, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Say ye. E means me. No, say E means me. Louder? Are you afraid to give? E means me. Yeah. So now, <laughs> now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do E. What do you do? Upon the first day of the week, that Sunday, right? The first day of the week. Once in a month, brother. No. Once in a month was Old Testament. The New Testament does not believe in tithes. Amen? Yeah. It does not believe in your 10%. That's why most of you give 5%. Amen? Yeah. But the Tony gives 10%. I bless the Lord for him. Amen? Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you Lay by him in store as God has snatched away from you. Is that what the Bible says? Huh? Come on. <laughs> Very good. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. Amen. This is how the church functioned. They always, every week, they brought as the Lord blessed them. Now, of course, you don't get salary every week. So you get once in a month. And so what we do? As the Lord has blessed us, graciously and generously, we come through our more than all. You see, offering belongs to us. But the New Testament generous giving belongs to Him. Because as He blessed, we give back. Amen? Amen. Now, he, you can never give, out give God. Can you? For God so loved the world. Daddy? Gave whom? Oh, boy. He gave His only begotten Son, which means He gave everything. Amen? Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by Him in store as God has prospered Him. Not, He never snares at you. He never takes away from you. He prospers you. Amen. Do you believe that? You truly believe? Yes. Amen. Amen. As God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. You know what? When the church thinks about giving for some missionaries and, and help some churches out or help our local church, there should be no gatherings there should be you know it should be surplus it should be overflowing as god blessed me i want to bless god's work and so i will give to the church so it can be used for a good purpose pay the rent of the church pay some help some missionaries out it should come out from our heart frankly speaking we are going on a minus thing for our church thing actually we can actually give more action and help the work going on. Praise the Lord for people who are giving. God bless you for it. 
let us let it not be out of force my friend just as as he gave you salvation may we give so more people will receive the gospel amen, amen. we need to do something i was challenging you last year we need to choose a missionary somewhere out in orissa or in andhra pradesh or in bihar and help a missionary so he can do and and his family will not be suffering with food or any problem man i want it to come out from each one of us i want each one of us to bring this out as a thought and pray and say brother and you put it in a check and say brother i want you to use this for a missionary somewhere who really need some help and god has really put this in my heart can this be done yes it can be done it should come out from a heart it should not be forced out because it's a normal christian when things are forced it's not normal it's not normal and god bless us my friend a characteristic of a normal christian is that he is saved by the grace of god he obeys in water baptism he loves the assembling of saints church should not be a boring thing amen, amen. he loves the assembling of the saints he partakes in the lord's table it's a command and uh, to remember he shed blood death burial and resurrection he suffering and i remember and i live a life that pleases him i live a holy life and i participate together with christians to remember what he did for me it's normal <clears throat> then you have compassion towards the lost souls somehow or the other you take the gospel and give it to someone <clears throat> that your family or your friend will not be lost and go to hell but be saved and come to christ amen, amen. and then you support the local church it's a normal thing it's not something extraordinary it's a normal christian life how is your life my friends how is your life are you a convert or a christian are you a follower of christ or you just have a tag of christianity on you may the lord speak to your heart more as you leave with this message in your heart and may he bless you abundantly and bless your heart shall we pray